I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video with the Vampire 2 carrying the match with another destroyer. And I duck, I've always said destroyers do carry the game and win the game most of the time. But before we get in, let's grab a button. I appreciate all the support of the channel and hope you guys are doing well. And thanks for building a great community and having fun at the same time of World of Warships. You guys, let's bring out a better community and make this thing even better than it was before. All right, first thing as a good destroyer player, you check out the lineup and let's see what's going on and what we're up against. Good thing is, first thing I notice is we do not have radar, but we do have a Z52 with six kilometer hydro range. A Daring and a Shimikaze. Those are our threats. And of course, again, looking for uh, radar cruisers. We don't. We have a Hindenburg. Again, that's a good thing to know what kind of ships are in the game. It can help you out build your and determine your strategy. As you can see, we're playing ranked, and I like ranked because it's kind of like clan battles where it's seven versus seven, and most of the time they don't have submarines or carriers. But again, I have been in matches with carriers and eventually some submarines. But again, that's and again, that's, I think that is, and we'll talk about that actually. This is a good video to talk about the rant about carriers and submarines right now. But as always, enjoy the background video, learn from the tips and tactics as always. And I'm using RPF, as you can see, located right there. And what do we do? We keep our guns pointed in the RPF with closest direction. And I already know that there's something, a threat in front of us. We're using AP initially because Vampire and Daring have some incredible AP. You can see right there, going right in. Look at that, 2,000 damage, and it is super powerful and good uh, angles for the Daring. Uh, and, of course, Vampire is the Commonwealth. And correct me, remember last time I made a mistake? Yeah, Commonwealth, for, uh, you know, for the Australian side there. But the Daring is the British style, so they're kind of like the similar play styles, Daring and Vampire. Different countries and different uh, navies, but uh, again, similar design concepts. And if you read about it, Vampire was taken from the Daring class style. So pretty incredible. And look at the power of the HE as well. Once their angle, once I, you notice, you see about that boom splash one right there. When you see the uh, destroyer go start going up uh, that slimmer profile, that's where you switch to HE. And of course, AP is good for those broadside shots right there. And they do a significant amount of damage, as you can see right there, for both Vampire 2, Daring, and as well the Druid. Incredible AP. I definitely recommend using that. And you can see right there, what is the first strategy we do? Priority, priority, priority is taking out their destroyers. And RPF does a great job for identifying that, because why? Most of the destroyer players usually are in the front, right? They're, we're faster, we're more nimble, we're agile. And you Usually with RPF, you're the first detected uh, item with RPF because you're always in the front. Most battleship players, as you can see right here, battleship player here, battleship player here, battleship player here, always in the back. So normally RPF doesn't locate them right off the bat. So you're looking for that destroyer kill. So I always go right for the destroyer player kill. And that's what is really, really um, enjoyable for me. I just like shooting destroyers. They're just so fun. But it's also the number one priority. You eliminate the destroyer. You literally increase the probability of your team winning not all the time, but you increase the probability. Didn't say you're going to win, but you, you have a better chance. And you can notice where we got two destroyers through their one. Our, both our destroyers, our, sorry, two of their destroyers are down, and they only got one left. And let's see which one is left. They have a Daring. So Daring is a pretty proud, powerful, kind of like the sister of the Vampire 2. Of course, Sam, Vampire 2 is Commonwealth, while the Daring is the British. So very uh, similar ship designs. The only, I would say, benefit is Vampire 2 has faster reload, the Hydro, 5 kilometer Hydro with Crawling Smoke. Daring has the heels. That's pretty much all it's got going for it. Uh, and it's got the quick smokes, of course, as the British line does, but I digress. Anyways, what are we doing right here? Well, you're going to notice, like, right now, a lot of this is just kind of waiting. We have two caps. We don't need to capture the third cap. They don't have Charlie, as you can see right there. See, we have Alpha, and we have Bravo. They need to capture Charlie, but look at this. They're all spread out. Nobody's capping. They're destroyers, they're, like, literally by himself now. So, really... We kind of can just sit back in here, and I don't. And this is a good lesson to learn mistakes that people make, okay? Normally, when destroyer players, when we win games, is one, you're just outplaying the other opponent. And number two is, 
just capitalizing on mistakes. A lot of the players in World of Warships are coming to all varieties, shapes, and sizes, and we don't know how they're going to do it, and a lot of them make mistakes. I make mistakes as well. And how you become successful as a destroyer player is capitalizing on those mistakes because you are very difficult to spot. You're fast, you're agile, you go around capping the cap points to win the games, you can kill uh, battleships with torpedoes like you see what I'm doing here, and you have the gun. So a very, very, very versatile, and that's why I like the destroyer gameplay role. So let's speed this up. Uh, while we're talking about that, so there was a recent uh, blog, Overlord Bow. Uh, he's one of the channels I follow, and they just uh, had a, a live stream, I believe, of um, the devlogs talking about the carrier we work. So uh, I'll let you just enjoy the background video while I talk about the carrier we work and what I think. First of all, carriers are the cancer of the game because why? It's an anti-ship system. I mean, what, what if you go look back at the movie Midway or go back and look they just released, right? What, what were the planes doing? They're bombing the crap out of carriers and battleships, right? Whatever. Uh, or airfields. Uh, I don't know if they really did the battleship thing, but they, but you've seen like the movies about Yamato where the airplanes, guess what? Airplanes attacking a battleship defenseless they really can't do crap aa is trash even in the game it makes reality aa is kind of trash when I mean, you have high level bombers and you just drop bombs like at free will i don't care how many shells you launch in the air i mean a bomb's gonna sink a ship like crazy bullets gonna maybe shred a plane here and there and you be overwhelmed with so many airplanes eventually you're gonna die so what what is the carrier re rework going on right now well because of the complaints that they've received so many people just don't like the carrier system especially uh spotting which is you can drop a fighter and it spots the whole map. Well, that defeats the whole purpose of positioning in a, in a battleship game, right? Because you're so big, bulky, and slow. And you're trying to, the, what makes the game fun is you get to get into positions that you can capitalize on. And that's the whole basis of the map and the game is strategy. How do I position? How can I overwhelm my opponent with strategy and uh, maybe overtaking a certain area? We get a nice little torpedo hit there. It's another uh, positive of uh, carriers. And then, of course, getting into a, a good setup allows you to capitalize on using your mind and, and, and strategy and positioning and aiming of guns and so forth. But with airplanes, you can just go out there, spot everybody, and jigs up. And then what else, what else is there to do? Well, just survive the incoming air attack. And then from surviving the air attack, it's not fun anymore because a carrier, like they were talking about in the live stream, where a carrier can just focus on one player the whole time. It can just single you out, which I don't think that's very enjoyable in the gameplay. And, and like I said, the, the airplane is a system that was an anti-ship system. It literally destroyed navies. Because once uh, even Admiral Yamamoto said that the power of uh, the, the navy is going to be the airplane. That's why they capitalized on Pearl Harbor, of, uh, you know, December 7, 1941. So like I said, you could see that the power of the airplane, how, and I'm in the Air Force, I mean, and the power of the airplane, the aircraft, if we can understand and studying the history of it. Uh, it is very, very uh, a strong and powerful component. Not, it's gonna, not, not saying it's going to win wars, but it is a, it'll lead you there. It'll get you way better probability of winning. And uh, whoever holds the high ground wins, and that's the air. And it's just not as enjoyable and fun with the carrier, uh, the carrier system, in my personal opinion. I think it should just remove it completely from the, the, the game modes. Unless you want to go play a carrier-only kind of system in battle, it doesn't make sense to bring in an anti-ship system into a surface ship game. That's why I don't like submarines, because this is a surface ship game. But when you start introducing things that go underwater or go above the water hence submarines and airplanes, you are bringing in an a antidote to, or however you want to look at it, the antidote to the the, uh, the problem, or you're introducing a problem to the, the healthy body. So in my personal opinion, it should literally be put into a separate mode or a role and kind of like convoy, it just makes carriers and subs their own little thing in a convoy system, whatever, I don't care. But this is a surface uh, ship game. And that's why I think uh, you can see Flamu uh, did a, re a video about the statistics. You guys can go look at your, up yourself. The statistics show that the amount of players leaving the game are going down slowly. And that's a bad thing. I actually want to encourage people to play this game a lot more because what led me into the game was a commercial of surface warfare games. You saw the ships, guns blasting left and right and shooting. And so it's so engaging to see all the, the ship's crew working together they're loading the guns, firing. Our, it's an artillery kind of gameplay. But when you start introducing, uh, like, literally, uh, I would say, components and weapon systems that degrade or negate that, then what are you doing? That's why battleships were taken out of the United States Navy system because they don't. They just found out they just don't work as well anymore. And now that's why you see the advent of destroyers and anti-aircraft and cruisers and battle frigates and things of that nature. And what is the biggest component of the Navy? The carriers. The carriers are literally that you know in my military when I work with them, um, they are the component of the, the carrier groups that are working in certain aspects. I've been all over the world; they're everywhere. And what's the first thing the president asks I mean, when the crisis comes up? Where are the carriers? Because it's a airport that's on a platform that moves around and introduces the airplane, which is the anti-ship system. So, like I said, I think the carrier rework right now is a good thing. Um, 
how it will work. I just don't think it's going to, I think it's going to attract a lot of carrier players because they're saying there are modes where the plane's flying at high altitude. You can't shoot, you can't spot anybody, but you're at full speed, like some kind of U-2 spy plane, and you're flying over all the way over to a ship and then trying to spot the ship and so forth. But here's a little bit, as you can see in the background, I am melting a Schlieffen. This is another thing I like about the shorter gameplay. You can literally melt down battleships like crazy with high uh, or high explosive, and it just literally, my goal is to start as many fires as possible. Oh, I learned a good thing. Here's a tip for good destroyer players. Look at the superstructure of the Schlieffen. If you see a big fire in the Schlieffen, I learned this from Trent last. Notice right there, I started a fire. You can see the fire right there. It started, and let me pause the video. This fire in the first section of the ship means that he doesn't have fire prevention, okay? So, because uh, according to Trent last and uh, Flamu, I learned this just recently. If you see a big fire, that means that's only one fire they can build on the, the, the center of the ship. Now, how this the game mechanics works. If you don't have fire prevention, you can have one, two, three, four sections of the ship on fire, which is the maximum fires you get, you get on the ship, which is exactly what I want to do as a destroyer player. I want to start as many fires as I can on a battleship because most of my little caliber, teeny puny little PP gun shells won't penetrate a lot of this armor right here. But notice that, look, my HE can only pen 19 millimeters. See that 19 millimeters right there? These are 113 millimeter guns, very, very small. They are pea shooters, okay? So they can only penetrate 19 millimeters, which obviously battleships have higher than, you know, 19 millimeter armor. So what all I can really rely on really is shooting the superstructure or starting fires or, of course, as always, naturally, torpedoes and whatnot. But fires are your the most consistent thing you can do as a destroyer player, gunboat player like me. So I'm looking for this section of here. I mean, normally, what are people always aiming at? The superstructure in the middle. It's easy to hit. It's big and it's easy, right? So what am I doing? I'm looking for, does a big fire happen on the center of this ship? If it does, that means they have fire prevention. That means the maximum I can do, if you look at fire prevention and go look it up, you can only have one, two, three fires. That's the definition of fire prevention. It reduces that skill and the commander skill for the battleships. It reduces the amount of fires you can have by one. So if they don't have it, I can do the maximum of one, two, three, four. One in the bow, one in the front of the, the superstructure, one in the back superstructure, and one of the aft right here on the stern. So if I see a big fire, I mean, it's like I can do three. But now I notice he only has a front section. That means I'm aiming at the back here and get another fire. And if I see the second fire going, I have two fires going. My goal is to get a third. The third is either shooting the back of here or shooting the front. It doesn't matter where you hit. As long as you hit some section of the bow or stern, as long as you get enough hits on it, it will start a fire. And, you know, you, man, I've seen, I melted down a Vermont, literally, with four fires on it. Four fires, you're trickling down passive income damage so, so quick. So let's take a look if I can get another fire going right here. And the vampire's incredible. Like the daring and the rate of fire and the reload, man. These things are awesome. Amount of, and also, I'm getting superstructure damage. You know, so the superstructure is usually 19 millimeters which is good because my guns will pin 19 mil, which is always an assured uh, way of getting damage. So let's see if I can get another fire. Man, I wish I could get another fire. Let's see here. Come on, baby, get another fire. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm getting I'm getting ship damage. And, oh, look at this. Here we go. And boom, splash two. Uh, that's my second kill for the game right there in the Vampire Turn. Now, look at this. I have We only have two destroyers left. Now, what are we supposed to do in this situation? Well, we're going to go kill the other destroyer because if we kill the other destroyer, our probability probability increases exponentially to win the game because they have really slow means of capping points, and you win the game by capping points or killing ships. So why not kill ships and cap points at the same time? Battleships and cruisers, cruisers have a very difficult time doing that. Once you understand that, you will understand. Now, the downside of Vampire 2, you can see the crawling smoke here. It's following me around, and I can't turn it off until it goes down in nine seconds, right? So that's the downside. He knows where I'm at, but here's the cool thing about RPF. I know where he's at as well so once it goes away i kind of go undetected from him so he won't know but he does have rpf so this located thing i don't know if that's him most likely a daring will a destroyer will have this skill like me but a battleship and a cruiser player 50 50 chance they have it right so usually they don't battleships don't really play with it cruisers yeah most likely i've never seen or i usually don't see cruiser players pick this skill destroyer players are, okay now it's showing me he's right off the one to two o'clock get all my guns face away get ready for a gunfight and this is why it's all this is what it's all about being a good destroyer player it means that your guns and weapon systems are in a position to inflict maximum damage at the most appropriate time. You want to be in position, guns ready, uh, and strike ready. And to that, that way you can catch first off, first shot, first kill, first look, everything. You want to have the element of surprise, the element of firepower, and, and gun angling, and so forth. So let's take a look here. And uh, okay, you have to know your ships as well. I know that, look at this, uh, and this is probably my Aslan's mod that tells me, hey, he has 6.0 concealment, which means I have, uh, where am I at? Vampire, I have 
not 7.2. Why is it 7.2? That That is reading incorrectly. I'm supposed to be 5.8. Because look, you can see right here, I have 5.8 on the uh, detection right there um, for my uh, concealment. So I have the advantage, 5.8 to 6.0, which means I will spot him first, and that means I will kill him first, right? So there it is. I'm, or I'm sorry, not kill him first, shoot him first. So he was lucky because we were already so close together. And that's the good thing about RPF. I know I can head in the direction I know he's at. We obviously are spotted. Now, he's in a kind of um, a, an advantage position because all his guns can be facing. And also, he's running away, kiting away. That is an advantageous thing for a destroyer player. So this position right here is advantageous for him. Now, the problem is his guns are not positioned in a way to start firing first. He has to wait for them to tra traverse to shoot me. So that is the downside right there. And again, this is where you capitalize on mistakes that players will make. And again, I'm not saying that he intended to do this, but it just happens the way it works out. For me, my guns were in a position to fire right off the bat. He has an advantage over me. He has 14,000 health to my 7,000, but you're going to notice we're going to capitalize on that because why? We have a faster gun relay. Our guns are in the right position. And of course, I have crawling, uh, hydro crawling, smoke, whatever, but he is also in, in kiting away. Again, this is where the rate of fire of the Vampire 2 comes into play. He has also an advantage. Of, I don't know how many more heals he has, so he can use his heals to fight us in that correct moment. So let's take a look at this gun battle right here. See, guns are not in position. I switched to uh, HE. Now, look at that. I fired AP initially because I thought he was going to be angled or flat broadside to me. Currently, look at his ship. His ship is a great. He is facing the, like, if this is up and down, it's 12 o'clock, right? He's aimed at 1 to 2 o'clock. That means AP is normally not going to work because the ship is angled. Once he starts breaking this 45-degree barrier right here, this is the 40. So up and down is 12 o'clock. Right and left is 3 o'clock, right? Once he breaks that slide, if you want to look up from your screen to the top right of the corner of the screen here, which is the 45-degree angle, if you can just imagine that, once I see him break 45 degrees, that's when you know you can shoot AP and have an, a damage. Now, most people have debated, do I shoot HE or AP at this moment? Well, it, again, it's up to you, but it depends on how you want to inflict damage. AP is not obviously not going to work in this situation. From the 12 to 3 o'clock, most likely not going to happen because if you read about AP shells for the, the Vampire 2, the Daring, and so forth, AP shells, they have a 45 to 60 degree impact angle, which means that ship has to be showing at least 60 degrees or less in order for those to actually pin and do damage. HE will hit anything, and it hits anything, it will cause damage no matter. So you're, it's your decision as a good player. Do you want to inflict consistent damage or you want to cons um, inflict a lot of heavier damage, but at certain times? That's what I, I let you go through. So let's take a look at this. Notice I'm going to fire. Look at the HE. Look at that. Okay, 2,414 right there. That is consistent, a lot of heavy damage with the rate of fire of the guns. Now, he's only firing his back turret, and he pops smoke. That's a great technique right there. He pops smoke to break that line of sight, which means he goes undetected, but also I go undetected. I have nobody in front of him spotting. Again, his detection range, there's nobody in front of him spotting. So guess what? We're going to capitalize on this. We're going to use his smoke fire cover to move closer to him. Why do I, is that a good thing for me? I don't want to mess around and start going and breaking distance. My goal is to win the game, right? So I need to get in the cap, get points, and then kill him. So that means I got to literally push the objective and go. Now, here's a tactic I've seen. I'll actually work around to the left side of the smoke. Because if he goes to the right, I'm still hidden. I'm using smoke screen for cover. But then if he goes left, I spot him like that. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and spot. Now, unfortunately, I made a mistake because I was kiting away. So he broke that line of sight, which means if he doesn't fire, he stays undetected. He's at 6.0 or greater. So remember, his range was 6.0. I got to close that distance to 6.0 or less so I can spot him. So I'm, I got engine boost on. I know I can catch up to him a little bit, maybe one to two knots of increments of um, overtake. So let's see if we can continue pushing. He continually slots me because I fired my guns. Now he is right in front of me because based off of RPF. So I'm going to go ahead and look in this general direction. Also keeping in mind where our torpedo is coming from. Okay. Best solution right here is to nose into the torpedoes because why? It's very difficult for him to, to torpedo a nose in slim toothpick profile torpedo. I call it the, the, um, the uh, toothpick profile because that is very difficult to hit with torpedoes because torpedoes naturally like to spread out. Like right, one, two, three, four, five, like that, right? If he was a daring, he can single launch them, but even single launch, you can dodge all those pretty easily. All right, so he is in front of us. Let's see, where are we going right now? Yep, he is going to be in a pickle here. We have two points. He has Z42 going to close the distance up to the north. Yep, there he goes. He made a mistake. He, he showed his distance a little bit too early because he turned left into it. Now, we're going to continue uh, focusing, uh, uh, nosing in. And I can use just the front two guns to kill him right here. He's going to decide whether or not he should fire, and he smokes up again. Okay, now, that's the beautiful thing about the daring is the quick smokes that you have and our quick cooldown, but they're also very short-lasting as well. I pop my hydro just in case she launched torpedoes, but I know I can close this distance. My hydro is only good out to five kilometers. You 
you can see right there, five kilometer detection range. And I'm gonna try to push him right there. No, he gets spotted by the six kilometer Hydro of Z42 right here. So I'm literally just gonna continuously push and boom, he goes down. Way to go right there, Z42, Commandant Marcos, way to go, good job. Um, actually, we did a pincer move, right? destroyers working together, and that is how we won the game right there. And we can just speed it up, uh, let you guys see that. We don't have to do anything. We can just sit back and we win the game in literally like a minute or whatever. But let's talk about while we're just sailing back here. I'll finish up on my thoughts about the... Um the carrier rework again i've already said the carriers are the cancer uh, of the whole game itself it literally their anti-ship system now the rework is like i said they're they're causing the first thing is they're going to cause planes to stop spotting they haven't addressed the idea of uh, spotter or sorry fighter plane spotting the idea the gimmick is is the the planes will have full speed but they'll be at high altitude which is interesting like planes always flew fast and they're at high altitude and now they're going to do when they attack they're going to drop bombers or drop their striking aircraft by one at a time and they only drop maybe three or four craft at a time and then they go down spot and then they d attack and destroy at like normal and then of course they're introducing the new gimmicks of instead of like the secondary sector fire that when you press o you know you're gonna do a 360 and do a quick i guess percentage burst of a uh, killing a plane somewhere you have to watch the dev blog and the download or the the talk about it and that's kind of the system right there I don't know all the details of it. You can like take a look and read about it, but essentially is no more plane spotting from the main planes. They fly altitude. When you attack, they send a, a group one section down. They will not be replaced by the ones at high altitude. You'll just go out, attack, and then you take control back of the... Um the fighter planes at the high altitude. Uh, the, the spotting is still kind of interesting of how they're developing. They're trying to do this whole test server out to, to determine and figure out what's going on uh, with the whole uh, system to see if it works. They're trying it out. I'm not going to be a part of that. You guys can do it too if you want. And then the other one is, uh, the biggest one is they're talking about manual secondaries on the carriers so that they can be more part of the game. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I look at this as it may detract a lot of carrier players to leave and not play anymore. I don't play carriers anymore. I think they're kind of broken OP and not fun. Uh, who wants to sail around and just drop bombs on floating targets? And if you want to go do that, go play Silent Hunter or do something else like be sub and go pick on convoys, whatever, right? The whole purpose of World of Warships is a surface game. And you guys can stop listening to me if you want, but I, I, I want to play this game to enjoy a surface warfare kind of game. I mean, look at the amount of ships that are in the game right now what what are what are the ships right like what what are the uh I'll, I'll just keep playing this while i'll watch it again just to have background but what are what is the reasoning behind uh a warship game what drew people to this game it's the the, the nature of ships the, how many ships they have like they have the destroyers the cruisers the battleships and that was what people really enjoyed to see different mechanics the, the different types of uh, makeups of them and just the collection the history of them right yes carriers were part of it yes submarines were more a part of it but why never did they not introduce that introduce that at the beginning of world of warships well because they knew that they were going to just be detrimental into the mechanics of the game uh the game just like uh, World of Tanks, you, you see the World of Tanks is about tanks. It's not about airplanes. So don't introduce an A-10 or a P-51 tank buster into a game that was focused on, you know, tanks. Like I, back in the day, I used to play a game called A-10 Cuba. And A-10 Cuba was literally, I get an A-10, is really fun. And you just go out and blow up tanks. I mean, that essentially what they've done now is like you're now, the, the you're controlling the targets that are, uh, that are, that are just the bots that are in those types of simulations, right? If you're going to play a flight simulator, all it does is bomb airplane, bomb tanks or whatever on the ground, then effectively what you're doing in World of Warships is you're just giving a player to fly above you and blow up you as a bot that's just sitting as a target practice for the airplanes. Well, if you're going to go play airplanes, go play World of Airplanes or World of Aircraft, whatever it is. I mean, go play that game. Why are they introducing a system into a surface ship warfare game? You see, it, it just doesn't make sense. And I get it. A lot of people gripe in there. I'm not trying to... Uh, I have to be one of those gripers because I have to fight against it because Wargaming, you're going to kill this game by introducing a system that was designed initially in history. And history has proven that, that you're introducing the airplane or a sub that literally is designed to be an anti-ship mechanism, but your whole platform is built on ships. It doesn't make sense. You're introducing, uh, I would say, either the cancer or the cure to the very actual problem that you make enjoyable in the game, if you want to call it that. I mean, the ship is the primary purpose of this game. So, again, I, I don't know why Wargaming is even bothering with, like, the carry re rework or whatever or introducing carriers at all. 
Uh, and that was the biggest gripe. I used to hate submarines a lot, but I think I guess the 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 on the social and everything, me, the the media and everything, and talking about World of Warships is carriers are the worst thing for the game right now. Let me know your thoughts. I love opening discussion about this. If you think I'm wrong or right, whatever, it, I love the discussion, and that's what makes this country great because you get to talk about and have fun discussions. And it's I like debating. It's just so fun to talk about you know current uh, systems and current problems and what we can do to make them better and fix. So again, that's my thoughts. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the carrier carrier we were rework and also how to be better at destroy player gameplay and as always i hope you guys are doing well make sure you, when you see me out there say hi and um, i'm uh, if you guys didn't stick around to this end of the video i, I just just trying to tell you my thoughts and ranting about carriers but we'll we'll have more discussion about this in the future but as always hope you guys have a great weekend we'll see you out there at clan battles or whatnot and rank as always thank you guys so much for the uh, community building a, a better one and uh, having fun at the same time so we'll see you soon take care cheers